Hello, this is Michael Osborne with WebEducator. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use the lookup function in SQL Server Reporting Services. Now, this video is based on a blog post by Lisa Nichols. Lisa agreed to let us create this video showing her solution, which is available as an article on her blog at the URL shown here. So let's begin by defining the problem we're trying to address. In SQL Server, as you can see here, I have defined a database called School. This database contains two tables, a teacher's table and a credentials table. Now I've dropped these in a diagram so that you can see the relationship between the two. Teachers has a one to many relationship to credentials. So a teacher could have zero, one or more credentials associated with them. So my goal in my report is to generate a table which has a row for each teacher and in a cell within that table, I want to concatenate all of the related credentials for that particular teacher. So let's now jump over into reporting services. Now what I've done is I've built a report server project here. And you'll notice I've defined a data connection at the project level called school. And I've got a teacher creds report that I've created. And in here I've defined two data sets. The first data set goes to the teachers table. The second data set goes to the credentials table. So I'm going to begin here by adding a table to my report. So I'm going to go to my toolbox. We're going to grab a table. We're going to drop it on our report here. Now I've got two row or two columns in my teacher table that I'm interested in. So I'm going to drop the first name in the first column and the last name in the second column. And in this third column, what I want is a concatenated list of the credentials associated with that teacher. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a placeholder inside this cell. Now you can give it any label you want. We'll call it creds, whatever you want to call it. And for the value, we're going to assign an expression. Now the expression will look like this. What I'm doing here is I'm using a lookup set function. Now the lookup set function requires four parameters. What you're passing in is the ID value from the parent or the header data set, which is my first argument, in this case, teacher ID. The second parameter is the matching key value in the child or the detailed data set, in this case, again, teacher ID. The third parameter is the value that I want to display from that child or detail. So in this example, it is the credential name dot value. And the fourth argument is the child or detailed data set that we're actually talking with. Now, what this lookup set function is going to do is return to me a array of objects, one or more, which are then concatenated together using a simple join function in order to produce the final list of credentials for that particular teacher. So we're going to say OK in this text box, and then we're going to go preview our report. And when we do, you will see that my report includes teachers, and for each teacher, it includes one or more possible uh, credentials. OK, so there's some other cool things you can do here. Suppose, for example, that I wanted to actually use some HTML, some markup, if you will, in my credentials list. I could then go back to my design if I wanted here. And what I'm going to do is I'm, first of all, going to edit the expression for this credentials, or I'm sorry, for this uh, placeholder. And what I've done, you'll notice, is I have now included some HTML, some markup. I'm creating an unordered list with a number of list items. Now, once I've changed that, there's one other thing I'm going to need to do. I'm going to need to go to the properties of this placeholder. And you'll notice there's an option here to specify that I want this to be interpreted as an HTML tag rather than as plain text. Now, once I've done that, again, I can go back and I can preview my report and you'll see now that I have an unordered list for my credentials. And it's bulleted list, basically, for the various credentials for each teacher. Now, there's one other issue that I might want to address here. You'll notice that at the end of this table, I have a row for Blind Lemon. And Blind Lemon doesn't have any credentials. So how do I address that? How do I deal with it when I have a, a teacher who has no credentials? Well, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go back to my teacher data set and I'm going to modify it a little bit. I'm going to go to my data set properties and you'll notice right now my query is simply selecting the teacher ID, the first name, and the last name from teachers. I'm going to add another column here and what I'm going to do is a select count star from credentials 
where the teacher ID each equals teacher ID as count credentials. Basically, I'm creating a uh, fourth column here, which will contain a number that tells me how many credentials that teacher has. Once I have that information available in my data set, I can then go back into my uh, placeholder expression here and I can modify it like this. What I've done is I've put in here an IIF clause. My IIF statement gives an expression, first of all uses an expression, and then it has a true and a false part. So I've said if the count credentials value is zero, in other words, if there are no credentials, I will return an empty string. If there are credentials, I will return my unordered list as usual. And now if I go and preview this report, you will see that now blind lemon does not have a bullet. There is no unordered list there. We basically eliminated that unordered list, that HTML, that markup. Now, as Lisa points out in her article, there are a couple of things to be careful about here. First of all, it's easy to make mistakes when you're building these expressions. It's easy to have typos, to have incorrect names, and in fact, you will even run into case sensitivity in some of your data names. So be careful and be aware if you have a mistake when you go to preview the report, you'll get a little error and it's going to be fairly clear. It's going to give you a pretty good idea what the problem is. So it's fairly straightforward to deal with those. Okay, I'd like to again thank Lisa Nichols for the inspiration for this video. Be sure and check out her blog at the URL shown here for additional articles related to SQL Server Reporting Services. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it.